A while ago, I've developed this experimental extruder which uses timing belts to push the filament. If we go even further back in time, then we end up with this swappable hot end. In this video, we are going to combine both of them. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more about them later in the video. When I finished this design, I already had the idea of adding a connector at the bottom of this extruder. But I wanted to place it here at the front. But I quickly found out that there is a lot of unused space here with this original design. So I've used this unused space to add these connectors. I had to dig deep into my archives to find parts for this swappable hot end. But I found everything and I've printed all parts out of PMMA like resin from 3D resins on the Anycubic Photo Mono X. I've glued in all inserts, I've sanded everything down, finished all the parts and now they're lying here on the table ready to be put together. Yeah, it's... Yeah. That motor gear failed because of that, that flat edge on the shaft of this motor. Didn't go all the way down, so I basically pressed it past that. I think that most resins wouldn't have survived this violence at all. We still have to put the connector on it. I will start by making the hot end, because the cables that will be left from this hot end can be used uh, for the wiring of this. I've got a couple of hot ends lying on this table. I will start with this Fetus Dragonfly, the BMS version. I've made a fitting holder for it. After this is done, then I'm going to make a version for this E3D hot end. Also, the color scheme of this Noctia fan really suits this hot end. This is going to look epic. The first tool is finished and um, well, it's a nice little package. So now you must add the female connector to this extruder. And then we are going to make the tools for, well, for instance, this E3D V6. And I found a cool solution how to mount this. I honestly do not like this mounting system. If you want to tighten the nozzle, then well, the whole thing turns around. This tool holder has a neat feature. I will explain that later. 
first, well, let's meet these two and do a first test. Okay, while that extruder is being put together, we can take a look at the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform on which you can build your own website the easiest way possible. It has several award-winning templates. You can just slap on a template, modify it so it suits your needs. If you want to sell liquors, for instance, you can create a web store. You can create member areas so you can sell courses. But one thing I find also very interesting is personal branding. If you're looking for a job, for instance, then having a professional looking website helps significantly. If you show your skills, your story, that adds a lot of value. If you compare this with social media, for instance, all your work is just on one single pile. And with your website, you determine what people get to see and how people get to see it. If you go to squarespace.com, you can sign up for a free trial. You don't have to register your domain yet. You can just play around on there. And once your website is ready for launch, go to squarespace.com slash printing and you get 10% off your domain or website on there. Now let's see if that extruder actually works. If you just ignore the fact that we have to remove this part and fan in order to replace the tool, then this actually turned out pretty good. It has exactly the same size as the original one, but it has the connector here. The mounting holes line up perfectly with the holes on this Wemma Mutant tool plate. If you don't have this plate, I've designed this plate which should fit the Creality printers. I've designed these thumb screws so I don't have to remove this part and fan in order to replace the tool. So my idea is to print those with this extruder to see if it works. And in the meantime, I'm going to make the holders for these other tools. This is the 3D printer that we are going to use. It's my very first Creality printer, the CR10. I've used wood here at the bottom. I can just mount the components on there using just wood screws and it makes things very convenient. I've added the Duet 3 Mini because of the capabilities it has. Now well, let's turn this thing on and see if we can heat everything up. If I turn this on, then this fan should start running. This fan is running. Yeah, it's running. Let's go to the Duet web interface and see if the other stuff is also working. Okay, it shows the temperature. So let's heat it up and it's heating up. Nice. Heater is heating up. This fan works. Um, let's enable that part end fan. And that's also running. That means that we can start printing. Okay. Well, while this thing is printing the thumb screws, we can build a tool for the E3 DV6. Usually with these colors, you have like two halves that are clamped against each other to hold this in place. But the disadvantage is that it still can rotate if you're going to tighten the nozzle. And the other problem we have is that we have to place it in sideways. But there is also a Bowden tube in here and it sticks out a little so we can't have a sideways movement. So I must press it in here like this. So what I've done is I've added these two holes. If you place M3 screws in there, then they basically cut their thread just on the side of this collar. So that fixates it and that also prevents it from rotating. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can just I can show it in the CAD file, that makes sense. And this just cuts its own thread in this aluminum. This is not going to rotate. And the same thing goes with for this tool as well. This is the, the Fetus Dragonfly the BMO version. This is not going to move. Well, let's make a similar package as the one over there. So we have three separate tools. I finished these tools and eventually it's the idea to add more tools. I've got a couple of holders here for the standard Creality hot ends. I've also printed these thumb screws. 
and they fit, but I soon found out that it's still very tough to mount it with this spark and fan. And I want this to work without any additional tools. And also mounting these is, well, you don't have much room here. So I went back to the drawing board and I've modified this part and fan holder and I've printed it out of ABS on the Creality N3 S1. So this is the part and fan holder right now and I can just remove it. And I've got this, well, this dovetail connection and this has a slotted hull so I can modify the height. And well, let's do a quick demonstration on how to mount this. I can just screw these on. Now I can use the thumb screws. Because they're both angled, you don't have to tighten it that much. And I can just slide this part and fan on here. So eventually the files of this will be available on my website, properprinting.pro. If you cannot wait, then the design files are already available to my Patreon supporters. This Patreon support helps a lot, especially these guys, my top tier Patreon supporters. So thanks a lot for your support. Now I'm think I think I've got a an interesting and fun idea that we can print to see how well this actually works. I printed this skull from Rochi Studios. I got several messages from people saying that this looks like me up to the point that someone made this. <laughs> the extruder concept works and I think that that's very dope. I, I've got to be honest with you. At first I wanted to print this out of TPU, the softest TPU 60A. I think it would have been very weird to have this Thing very flexible. I made a mistake. I wasn't careful enough drilling out this channel. Well, it's quite interesting because this is transparent. You can actually see what happens when the pressure is building up with a TPU. It was just being pressed to the side and then it buckles and then it will just block. But the funny thing is that the best extruder capable of printing the, this TPU, which didn't fill immediately, was this stock Creality extruder. <laughs> the good news is that I was able to verify that this Creality holder also works. Well, I've got several different holders now. They are all interchangeable. I think that this thing is good at printing TPU because of the, um, the Bowden tube. This Teflon is way more slippery than the metal inside of this full metal hot end. If you know an interesting extruder which you would like to see being put on here, leave a comment then I will see if I can get my hands on one. This is the extruder series in which we are going to experiment on how to 3D print weird things. If you don't want to miss that and you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. Well, I'm going to work on the next project. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this one and see you in the next video. Bye.